this tonight in the house of the Lord and on Facebook. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Tonight we have Kathy Chappell who is going to lead us in some a cappella music. So I just encourage you for the moment. We'll come back with some Bible study. But uh, just stand with us and uh, or sit with us. And uh, we're going to sing some worship songs. And God bless you and thank you for joining us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercies. We thank you, Lord, for another day to serve you. Regardless of the chaos in our nation, we can depend upon you, our rock, our solid rock, our constant. And Lord, we thank you that you are our refuge, our strength, and we thank you that you're in control over every, each and every situation. So, Lord, be with us tonight as we worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Join us, a cappella. Oh, my God. 
do love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Kathy, for helping us out this evening. It's good to have you tonight. It's good to see you tonight. Uh, we're taking a little different vein tonight in, in, in the chaos of the day. Uh, we need the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the King. He is a mighty God. We need to tell Him we love Him because He's still in control. It looks like chaos. In all the chaos and everything that's happening in our world, it, we are, and it is to point to Jesus. And tonight, I'm going back a couple of years ago, uh, March we started a series two years ago um, about the star signs, and I've been intrigued, and, and, and let me just tell you, tonight we're going to talk about the Polaris, but before we get to there, slide number one, but wait, space the final frontier, but wait, Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God created what? The heavens and the earth. Slide number two, the international version, new international version, Psalm 19, verse 1. From the director of music, a psalm of David, the heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his handiwork. I, I did a little research this afternoon, and did you know, in our little Milky Way galaxy, there are estimated between 300 and 500, okay, let's say 400, a billion, that's with a B, stars in our galaxy. And th now they say 300 to 500, that's about 200 billion different. And it's estimated in the universe that take a one and then put 24 zeros behind it, that's the number of stars in our universe. So when we go to Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, the, the, in the beginning God created the heavens, and it is quite an expanse, and the earth. We, we kind of know what is in the earth, but let me tell you something. These, these things that we're talking about so blow my mind, and as you know, it doesn't take much to blow my mind. But, and so I have to put a disclaimer this time before we start the study, and you need to understand that I am a novice when it comes to studying the stars. No, 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 no. I'm less than a novice. There is so much out there that I don't know, and this little study that we've done, I find out the more that I find out, the more I, the less I know. <laughs> the more that I understand, I, I really know less. So we're, we're going to be studying a couple of, they're not even constellations, but a couple of different um, star signs up there that you are very familiar with. So tonight we're going to look at uh, one of the famous stars and constellations throughout the heavens, but we're going to concentrate on a couple of figures. Uh, the third slide, the Polaris or the North Star. It is the 50th brightest star in the heavens, or in our galaxy, or in the heavens. And there is a, it, it is 430 light years away from us. Now here's a fun fact. Okay, you ready for a fun fact? Here's a fun fact. The speed of light is approximately 186,000 miles per second. So traveling at the speed of light, it will take you, hence, it'll take you 430 years to get to the Polaris, what we call the North Star. And, and how do you locate the North Star? I'm glad you ask. Uh, there are a couple of different ways. Uh, number one, find the Big Dipper. Now, I don't know if you can see this on Facebook, but here is the Big Dipper at the bottom, and at the end of the ladle, or the gourd, whatever you call that, at the end, that ladle, if you draw a straight line, it goes in the proximity of where the North Star, or the Polaris, will be. So if you find the Big Dipper, we're going to be talking about the Little Dipper tonight and the Big Dipper. And the Big Dipper always points to the North Star. 
You can always find it. You can, you can track it there any time. You can look. Isaiah 40, verse 22. He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. These are, it's so interesting. The stars, the heavens, declare his story. We've got to get this. And in the book of Revelation, it talks about uh, these 24 elders, they will be around the throne. Okay? There is a time-lapse photography that we're going to show you right now. And this is of the Polaris. And time-lapse time photography, the Polaris is the center point of the galaxy, and the stars revolve around the Polaris. Now, you got to get this. <laughs> you just got to get this. This is so cool. All these stories and all the constellations, all the drama, the circle around the one star, the North Star, and, and you've got to ponder in your heart for a minute, what does all this mean? Well, I, I hope as a novice, or less than a novice, I can get you pointed to the North Star. I, I hope I can direct you outside later and you can find the North Star. And when a traveler in the desert or on the sea, if they find the Polaris, which is known as the North Star, if they find that, then they are never lost. They can always find their way to where they're going or back home. For thousands of years, in fact, I tracked it today, I, I found out that in the seas, in travel in the seas, even as early as the first century, they were using the North Star, the Polaris, to navigate by during the day, and they would use the sun in the daytime. They used the Polaris at night and the sun during the day. Simply by spotting the Little Dipper or the Polaris, they could find their way home. Uh, are you, okay, we're, we're talking about Christianity. We're talking about finding the star. Hmm, hmm. We're talking about King Jesus sitting on the throne and everything revolves around him. Uh, are you tracking any of this at all? Because the heavens, in the beginning God created the heavens and throughout all of the heavens, it tells his story. And so I wanted to start with the Polaris first. Here is King Jesus sitting on his throne, and we are lost sheep. But if we can find that Polaris, that North Star, Jesus, we can always find our way back home. <laughs> Number one on your outline. Oh, I forgot to tell you, we have outlines. Did you grab an outline when you came in? Uh, okay, great, great, great. Thank you. We have some outlines. Number one, the throne chapter. We can see there that uh, even this little bit of scripture that I gave you, enthroned. Revelation 4, 2. At once I was in the Spirit, John speaking, the revelator, and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. Now we know, and, and you can answer me, who is sitting on the throne? King Jesus. Say that with me, King Jesus. He's sitting on the throne. And he, he, he sees here that standing in heaven, the throne symbolizes the sovereign authority to rule. Now, I did some more chasing, and, and the number 14 kept cropping up. Uh, the number 14, also, it establishes his throne of Jesus when you study the number 14. It is connected because of the word of the throne. It's mentioned 14 times in this one chapter and 14 times in other books. That's just a little, the little stuff there, 14. And here in this chapter, in this one verse, on one sitting on the throne, Jesus is sitting on the throne. It says he is seated on the throne. Now, we have the political stuff that's going on in the election, and when you are elected, you are seated in that position. Are you tracking with me? When you're elected, you have a seat. You have been elected. You have now the authority 
that you have been given. Now, if you are unseated, that means you're put out of office. So this scripture says, I, I, I saw the throne and he, I, I saw someone seated or sitting on it. So it says that King Jesus is the authority. He is the ruler. He's sitting on the throne and everything is revolving around him. Uh, a little side note, in Matthew chapter 1, verse 17, going back to the number 14, it's connected to God's sovereign, sovereign, sovereignty throughout the generations. Fourteen generations. Did you know this? The number 14. From Abraham to David, how many generations? Fourteen. Very good. From David to Babylonian captivity, there were... 14 generations. From the Babylonian, Babylonian captivity to Christ, there are 14 generations. He who is sitting on the throne, these 14 is in, con is in connection with he who is seated on the throne. So he has taken his executive office and he is seated at the throne. Unseat, like I said, means put out of office, and I'm here to tell you Jesus is still in the office, and he's seated at that throne. Hallelujah. So the Polaris, the North Star, represents Jesus sitting, ruling, reigning, and he is in total control. When you look at the world today, it looks like things are wackoed and out of control, a lot of chaos. Uh, there's, there's peaceful protests, there's rioters there, there's, there's paid personnel there, there's all kinds of stuff going on. And unfortunately, as I understand it, a young woman lost her life today in all the chaos. And we need to understand God rules and reigns. And, and did he let this happen? Is he causing this to happen? Is he? Uh, everything that's being done... It is to point us and others to Jesus. Listen, we cannot depend on this world. We cannot depend on America. We cannot depend upon our government. We need to uh, 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 depend on Jesus Christ who is seated on the throne. Can I have an amen? amen. He leads, he guides those who actively seek him. And that's another point that we're going to make here. The Polaris is always there but not always recognized. So it is with Jesus. He's always there, but he's not always recognized. You don't always see him working on our behalf, but we need to understand that he's always there and he's always working on our behalf and for us. The thing about the North Star or the Polaris, you would never know it was there unless you were willing to look for it and to seek it out. Though it can be seen even through the light of the big cities, and I can see it at night in our backyard, and there's a myriad of stars out there, and there's street lights over here and a bunch of lights over there, but I can still see on my back patio, I can see the Polaris, the North Star. It is not the brightest star, nor the most beautiful star in the heavens, but it humbly sits in the heavens, as the single most important star in the heavens. You need to get that. There's one star that is the most important. You see, if you find the star and you're a seagoer or you're lost in the desert, that star can literally give you life or if you can't find it, death. Are you making any correlation there? If you find Jesus, you have life, and you have it more abundantly. If you don't find him, then there is eternal death. Whoa. Somebody say, whoa. whoa. And the perfect picture, this is the perfect picture of Jesus. He's always there. He's always in the center of everything, but easily dismissed and not recognized by the huge majority of people and occasionally who occasionally look up, the Polaris can be lost in the crowd, lost in the stars. Jesus can get lost in all the, the hustle and bustle of everything that we're doing, in the chaos and watching too much TV or not enough or whatever. Uh, we, we can become so 
uh, confused and so inundated with all of the media that the media is telling us that we can lose focus of the one most important thing, the single most important thing, and that's Jesus Christ. Keep focused on Him. Doesn't matter what you're Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, or whatever you are, or Independent, or nothing. Let me tell you something. We've got to stay focused on Jesus Christ. Can I have an amen? amen. At first, the Polaris looks like any other star. People are a bit disappointed when they look up, oh, I thought it might be a lot brighter or a, a lot bigger. It's, it's kind of faint. And if a voyager who's out on the sea or the desert or, or traveling misses the Polaris, like I said, it can mean life or death. It reminds me of Jesus as easily, is easily missed. And there are severe consequences if we miss Jesus. And I'm here to tell you, I, I want to steer you to Jesus. Don't miss him. Because it means eternal life with Him. This life is going to be over. We're, our days are numbered. We're but a vapor. We're here for a little bit and then we're gone. And there is an afterlife. There is an afterlife. It's called eternal life. Either eternal damnation, which is hell, or there's eternal life. We rejoice in the heavenly realms. So you do not want to miss Jesus. Matthew 13, 55, isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother's name Mary? And aren't his brothers James, Joseph, Simon of Judas? And Isaiah 53, 3, he was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Listen, we can easily just forget him. We can despise him. But I want to encourage you today, especially in today's world, do not despise him. Do not forget him. You need him today more than ever before in all of the chaos. I never thought America would look like it looks like today. I never thought it would look like this. And how quickly we've come to a point where doesn't matter which side there's chaos. Um, I, I just can't get into the politics, but it doesn't matter. We've got to focus on Jesus. And yes, it does matter. It matters to us all. But we pray and we believe and we run into the one whom we can depend on, Jesus Christ. Now you need a trained eye to find the North Star. You're going to need someone maybe to lead you to the North Star. Mm -hmm. You're going to need someone to lead you to Jesus. And if you're watching on Facebook or in these four walls tonight, I want to lead you to Jesus. I want to tell you that He is the Savior of your soul. I want to tell you He's the only one who, for, who can and will forgive you of your sins. However great, however big, however small. For we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And he's willing to forgive you if you will ask him. Number two on your outline, star light, star bright. As I said, the Polaris is the 50th brightest star. 49 other stars are brighter than the Polaris. Though ranked 50, how many of you have ever done a, a number study? In, in the Bible, what does the number 50 mean? Well, it means jubilee. What does jubilee mean? It is the year of forgiveness where slaves and prisoners are set free. The 50 means jubilee. They are set free. Debts would be forgiven and the mercies of God would be uh, particularly manifested your, your debts are forgiven. It's the year of Jubilee. Hallelujah. The 50th brightest star, when you are pointed to Jesus, he forgives you who are enslaved to sin, prisoners of, the, of Satan and the devil, and your debts, listen, I owe a debt I cannot pay. But he is full of grace and mercy and forgiveness, and he comes in and forgives us of our debts, hallelujah, and our sins. Praise the Lord. It's not just a coincidence that it's the 50th brightest star. It's the 50th for the year of Jubilee, a time of forgiveness. 
When we see Jesus, our lives revolve around him. We are no longer slaves to sin. Your debts are forgiven, your, and God's mercy is made manifest in your life. And we are brought back, if you, if you strayed, you are brought back into the family. No longer a slave, no longer lost. Amen. Number three, far away and super bright. The Polaris is a yellow supergiant that shines at 2,500 greater than our sun. Somebody say, wow. And yet when you look up there, it doesn't look to a 2,500 luminosity greater. Astronomers estimate, again, Polaris's distance of 430 light years from us. Let's take the 43 out of the four, uh, 430 years. Revelation 4.3. The one, uh, uh, make a little correlation here. I, I'm just throwing some things out here. 430 light years. Revelation 4.30. The one sitting on the throne was as brilliant as gemstones like jasper and sard. By the way, jasper is red, yellow, brown, and green. Sard is orange, red colors. And the glow of an emerald green circled his throne like a rainbow. So you have all the colors. And Sunday, we're going to talk about the light of the world and, and the colors that we're going to talk about. Listen, it all revolves around Jesus. I don't know if you're getting this. He's sitting at the throne. Everything's revolving around him. And it is, and he is, as bright as these gemstones. Can I have an amen? Again, Exodus 30, uh, 4, verse 30. 430 light years. Exodus 4, 30. Then Moses and Aaron returned to Egypt and called all the elders, there we are with the elders again, of Israel together. Aaron told them everything the Lord had told Moses, and Moses performed the miracle, miraculous signs as they watched. Listen, when you know Jesus, uh, my Bible says signs and wonders will follow. Mm -hmm. Anybody had a miracle over the past week or so? Listen, a lot of times in the chaos, the miracles are so subtle that you don't really see them. And we need to understand that his miracles and his, his mercies are new every morning. Acts 4.30, there's that 4.30 again. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. I don't know, I just get excited about this. Here again is miraculous signs. 430 light years away and we can go to several scripture, which is 430, and miraculous signs. If you know Jesus, there are miraculous signs. Has he saved any of you here tonight? Anybody? Gotten saved? Okay, that was a miracle. Not the lamb, the lamb's blood. It cannot save you. There's only one blood that can save you, and it's Jesus Christ's blood. That's a miraculous sign. That is a, a miracle that's happened to you. Genesis 1, 14. Now we're back on the 14. And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. Ephesians 4, 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So it's all pointing to Christ if you're not getting this. I, I hope you come away with one point. The North Star of the Polaris represents Jesus Christ. Everything revolves around him, and Jesus Christ is the principal. He's sitting on the throne. Number four on your outline, the message Polaris preaches. Revelation 7, 11, and the angels stood around the throne, here we are again, and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God. Proverbs 8, 14, I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently will find me. We've got to point people to Jesus Christ. You've got to point people to show them the North Star, or at least tell them how to find it through the Big Dipper and follow that, and there's the North Star. John 8, 36, once you see him, you are set free. Hallelujah! 
Ezekiel 6, 9 and 10, it grieves God that men do not see him and remain lost. He's here. He's always there. He's looking. He's waiting for someone to point them to him. So you are found and you're not lost. If you can point someone that's lost on the sea or in the desert to the Polaris, they're going to be saved. Are you getting this? The heavens declare the glory of God. And this is what the heavens declare through the Polaris, through the North Star. Number five, we're going to look at the Big Dipper. I don't know if you've looked at the Big Dipper lately, but there are seven, not five, seven stars that are part of a much bigger constellation. This also can represent the church. Revelation talks about seven stars, which are seven churches. Just a thought, just throwing some stuff out there. But the Big Dipper has seven stars. Hebrews says, Hebrews 12, 2, looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So we can look to the nor northern sky at any time of the year, and we can find the Big Dipper, which will point to the Little Dipper, which is Christ. Now, what is important about this? You see, the Big Dipper represents the body of Christ or the church. Seven stars, seven churches, and the churches are to point to Jesus. Wow. So seven stars are the seven churches. They point the way to the one, Jesus Christ, that everything revolves around. It is our job to point people to Jesus. The Big Dipper is his story in the heavens, and it's, it's the church, and we are to be pointing people to Jesus. The Greeks call this a, a giant bear. Now, I've looked at that, and on my view, you can uh, point it up there, and it shows the bear there, but uh, my only contention is I've never seen a bear with that long of a tail. Just a lot. But the Greeks called it a big bear, and it doesn't really look like a bear. I don't know if it looks like a dipper or a gourd, but it's a closer than a bear. And um, so the point is, number six, finding your way. The Big Dipper and the Polaris also play an important role in the story of the Underground Railroad. Have you heard of the Underground Railroad in your studies? When they, the slaves were trying to escape the south, and they were trying to get to the north, and they had an old folk song called, Follow the Drinking Gourd. And it was a clue that they were to find the Big Dipper, to find the Little Dipper with the North Star, and then they could navigate their way to the north. Somebody ought to be going, hmm. Anybody's brain, a little, mine's a little strained already with all this. And the gourd helped them escape the South during the Civil War. They would find comfort when they would es escape. They would sing the song and find the gourd pointing to Jesus, pointing to the North Star, for their escape. Earlier I told you that the end of the ladle, as we saw, draw a direct line and it goes to the Polaris, the North Star, which seven on your outline, there is a heavenly navigator. The Big Dipper has always pointed people to freedom from slavery and rescue from being lost. Not only in the stars, but in the spiritual realm, we are to point people to Jesus so they can be freed from slavery that the devil likes to keep you in and rescue you from being lost. Not because it's a spoon or a gourd or a bear, but because it represents, the, the Big Dipper represents the body of Christ, and again, it it just goes to show that the church, the body of Christ, should be pointing people to Jesus. 
Are you getting this? Now, if you're on Facebook, you can rewind and go watch it again. So we should be pointing people to Christ. The Big Dipper represents his story pointing people to Jesus Christ. The church is not the answer, but we have the answer. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Amos 5.8, seek him who created the seven stars. Do a little research on that one. Amos 5 verse 8, seek him who created the stars. Now, just real quickly, the Big Dipper has seven stars, and they have been named, and there are meanings by each name. Now, I'm going to have to have help. The next slide, please. The first name is, there you go, W. Okay, close enough. It means a herd of animals or flock. What does the body of the church represent? We're like the flock. <laughs> Are you getting it? Okay. The next star is called Mur Murik. Merk, the flock, 79 light years away. The next one is, you say it, visited, guarded, or numbered as a flock. Listen, when we know Jesus, Jesus protects his sheep. He visits with us. He guards us. We are numbered. <laughs> the next star is called, uh-oh, I'm, I'm missed. Yep, yes, based uh, of the tail or, or follows the behind, follows behind, located 58 light years away. And then there's Al Alioth, a she-goat located 81 light years away. And then Mezar, separate of small. So we're separated, we're different, we're set apart. And then lastly, Al Alcade, the assembled. Do not forget, the for do not forsake the assembling together. There's a lot of verses to go with these seven stars. Now these were named Thousands of years ago, before we had uh, the telescopes and things, they saw these and they named these. And again, I'll tell you over and over, his story is in the heavens. It's in the stars. Job chapter 9. Okay, number 8 first. Um, the more, the, one more thing about the Big Dipper. Job chapter 9. If you want to turn there with me, Job chapter 9 verse 7. He commands the sun, and it does not rise. He seals off the stars. He alone spreads out the heavens and treads on the waves of the sea. He made the bear, we're talking about the Big Dipper, Orion. Can anybody spot Orion up in the heavens at night? It's in the south, travels east to west. <laughs> anyway... And it's beautiful right now. You can see it outside. And the Pleiades. And the chambers of the south. They didn't have the telescopes. This was Job. Written about 4,000 years ago. They had already named the stars and the constellations. And the Big Dipper points to the North Star. Are you tracking with me? It's about the heavens. He does great things. The miraculous signs that I talked about earlier... He does great things past finding out. He, yes, wonders without number. The stars we cannot number. His miraculous signs and wonders, they're numerous. They, they are unexhaustive. You cannot, mm, so much out there that we just do not contain and con can comprehend. Job 38, can you bind the chains of the Pleiades? Can you loose can any of you tonight loose Orion's belt? Anybody? No? And Job's talking about it. Can you bring forth the constellations in their seasons or lead out the bear and its cubs? Do you know the laws of the heavens? Can you set up God's dominion over the earth? Emphatically, no. But the signs 
are in God's stars, the God signs. And we we're referring to the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper tonight. Number nine, looking up. The message of the Big Dipper that the Big Dipper preaches. The ones who circle the throne on high are his sheep. Psalm 107, 41. But he lifted the needy out of their affliction and increased their families like flocks. The second bullet, I uh, don't have it on the PowerPoint. People look to us to point the way to him. The next bullet, the church is, the, is to be the heavenly compass. We are to be the compass. We're to be the, the grounding point. We are to be the ones who are, <laughs> have the peace that passes all understanding. In all this chaos, we should have peace in our hearts. It's going to be okay. God's in control. Listen, we, we were just talking before service. We need to understand that in the end times, there's going to be a great falling away from the faith. Sobering thought. There's going to be a great revival where those who know nothing about him are going to get saved. I want to make sure that you all stay in the fold and you're not some of those that fall away. Listen, I want to encourage you to stay in your word, stay in your Bible, stay in your prayer closet. Listen, we are that heavenly compass that people need right now. The church is responsible for following and for those who follow. We are responsible for us following Him. And then we need to make sure that others are following Him. Lord, help us. John chapter 21, verse 17. The third time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was hurt that Jesus asked him the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus turned to him and said, then feed my sheep. Wow. So it is our job at AJ First to make sure that we are feeding the sheep Y'all, we've got to make sure that we're putting into you scripture. We, we, we've got to make sure that we're teaching you solid scriptural stuff. And like I said, I'm not even a novice at this, but listen, his story is written in the heavens. It's all there. And we, this Polaris, this teaching tonight, we just scratched the service, surface. And so I, I want to encourage you, in Christ, the best, is yet to come. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for our Bible study tonight. Lord, if there is anyone listening inside these four walls or on Facebook or YouTube, Lord, it is so simple to have forgiveness from our sins. All we have to do is believe on you. Lord, we are to point people to you. So we want to do that tonight. Jesus, you are the author and finisher of our, of our faith, finisher of our faith, and you are the savior of our souls. So we believe in you and we ask you to forgive us of our sins one more time. Come into our heart and our lives and forgive us. And Lord, help us to point others to you. We want to bear fruit. And this is one way to do it. We want to let our light shine. This is one way to do it. We want to be the salt of the earth as we spoke about last Sunday. We want to be that salt. We want to be that seasoning and flavor that people see and they say, I want some of that. I want what you have. Because Jesus Christ is radiating through us. Lord Jesus, again, we thank you for this Bible study. We thank you for saving us and keeping us and those whom you may have forgiven right then during that prayer. Forgive us of our sins. Come into our hearts and our lives, we pray in Jesus' name. And he just did that. So we thank you. As we leave this place, may your face shine upon us. We thank you for our time together. God be with each and every one of you. In Jesus' name I pray. And God's people said. Amen and amen. Thank you, Facebook, for joining us. Have a great week in the Lord. Come Sunday morning, 8.30, 10.30, 12.30. God bless you.